Yeah, I should be all right. I am alive on Facebook. All right. How you doing Paris? to my Periscope audience? How you doing? God bless you to my Facebook audience. Those of you that are watching me on YouTube, those of you that are watching the replay on any platform, and those of you that are listening to the podcast, thank you so much for listening. God bless you. We do have a live prophetic word for you. You hear me say it all the time. I will repeat it here. This isn't a word, but I'm just repeating this here. You hear me say it all the time that it's important that you have the prophetic in your life. Do you know why it's important that you have the prophetic in your life? Because you need a rhema word. You need a fresh breathed word. You need a right now word from God. When you don't have the prophetic in your life, that's how you get the situation where you have some people that preach the same sermon every Sunday and they preach the same sermon for like 30 years. If you've ever been in a situation like that or a spiritual leader has about four or five sermons that they preach, and they just pull out the same four or five sermons and they recycle them during a month. Do you know why? Because they're not asking the Lord for a fresh word, a right now word. And also because that's just religion. Let me move my mic and be sure I'm getting my sound picked up. Sorry about that. Because that's just religion. You do not understand God as a person. You do not understand that God is a person, not a set of rules. And according to what Jesus said in the book of Acts, Father moves according to the times and the seasons that he has put in his own power. So father has a map, father has times and seasons and a map, a matrix stuff that he's planned out. And whenever he's ready to do something, he's moving according to what his plan and purpose is for that season. As a human, you cannot assume or presume that you know what that is. How would you know? How would you know what God Almighty is thinking? How would you know what God Almighty is planning? How would you know? Please explain, okay? You cannot assume that you know. You cannot presume to know. You have to ask. Why do you have to ask? Because God is a person. He is not a set of rules. That is how people get stuck in religious denominations and cults and unhealthy religious beliefs and so many things that end up stagnating our life. And then people say that's God. And then other people look at that and they say, well, why would I want that? Why would I want to follow that? Why would I want any part of that? That's not God that you're looking at. That's religion. That's people that have built a form and a fashion, people that preach the same sermon every Sunday or the same half dozen sermons, people that are more concerned with the liturgy, the order of service, the way things go. Then they are with what it is that God is actually saying, because they do not understand God as a person. And God is a person. He is not a set of rules. And so uh, let me look that scripture up for you that I referenced so you know I'm not making that up. And uh, so you can look at it for yourself. Okay. That's Acts 1 and 7, where the Lord says, uh, verse 6, so when they came together, meaning the disciples, and the, the Hebrews that did follow Jesus, when they came together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, Acts 1 and 7, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. Okay. And that word authority means privilege, force, capacity, competency, freedom, mastery, delegated influence. Okay, that's why you have to go behind the original, go to the original language, go behind the English so you can understand the breadth of what's being said there. So what the Lord is saying there is that Father God has all those things mapped out according to his own authority, according to his own breath, according to his own wisdom and plans. And how could you possibly know? So you have to ask. And when you ask the Lord, you have to ask him what his will is. You have to ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to do? You have to ask the Lord, what is my part in your plan? Because God, of course, could not tell you the whole plan. If God told you the whole plan, that would, of course, break your brain. Can you imagine the amount of data that God has to field every day? Can you imagine the, the uh, data stream that flows uh, before God's throne every Sunday? Can you imagine? Okay. God couldn't show you all that if God just gave you a a sneak peek of that, it'd be like Raiders of the Lost Ark. You just explode and you melt. You can't process all that data. How, how could you possibly handle that? 
That is why we, that is one of the reasons, oh, there's my sister, let me say hey to my sister. That is one of the reasons that God gave us the prophetic. We asked the Lord, where are you right now? Where, where are you in the scheme of things? And more importantly, what do you want me to do? So whatever the Lord tells you or doesn't tell you, whatever Lord, the Lord says or doesn't say, you ask him, what is my portion in this mix? That is why you need the prophetic in your life. That's why you hear me say that over and over and over and over again. Because if you don't have a fresh word from God, if you don't have a rhema or a breathe or a right now or a, a dy dynamic right in the moment word from God, if you don't know what the time and the season is and what it is you're supposed to be doing, you can absolutely miss God. And the Bible teaches us that you can miss God with your whole life. You can be like those people in Matthew 7 that come before the Lord, bringing all that good works, bragging on everything that they've done. And the Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you. We never had a relationship. Because the Lord says it right there. I never knew you. We were never intimate. We never had a relationship. You never actually asked me what I wanted. You never actually fellowship with me. You never actually got to know me. And God is a person, not a set of rules. So you don't want to fall into the trap of being a religious person where you have set up a form and a fashion. Not that we're not supposed to have structure and order, don't misunderstand me, but where you have set up a form and a fashion based on something God did or something God said or based on what you think. And then you say it's this way all the time and same sermons are blah, 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 blah. And you get obsessed with liturgy, with order of service. That's the mark of religious people. And I want you to notice during 2020, God has torn all that down. God tore all that down. God tore all that. that ain't never coming back like it was. If churches open up all over the country like they used to be, the people aren't going to come back like they did. It's not going to be the same thing. When something gets torn down like that, you have to build something new. But whatever happens going forward, everything that we had going before is not going to come back, come back like that. And a lot of people are going to miss the point of these last several months and never actually ask the Lord, what do you want us to build? What are we supposed to be doing? They're going to go back and try to build something that's been torn down. You see that? All that can be avoided when you walk in the prophetic. All that can be avoided when you understand that Jesus is a person. That's why you are a person. You are made in his image. All that can be avoided when you understand that Jesus is a person, not a set of rules. And you cannot assume to know what he is doing from season to season. You must ask him. And then when you ask him, then you know what to obey. Then you know what to do. And that's how you know you're in the will of God. That's going to come through the prophetic. And if you don't have the prophetic in your life, you'll be building religious systems You'll be building things based on something God said a long time ago or where God was. Or I was talking to a friend of mine the other night. We were laughing about people that sing the same song. No, I was talking to my family. We were laughing about people singing the same songs they sang 20 years ago, trying to get that anointing going about a song that was hot in the 90s. And this 2020, when the scripture says, sing unto the Lord a new song, you think I don't have no new songs? He's trying to hear, he's trying to give people. See, that's the difference between walking in the prophetic and not. That is why I come on every Sunday to give you a live prophetic word. That's why I call it that. A fresh live prophetic word from God. Lord, what are you saying today so that we can hear his voice through the Holy Spirit and then we know how to order our steps, <coughs> pardon me, based on what the Holy Spirit is saying now. That's why the Holy Ghost is here. Jesus said that he had to leave because if the Lord stayed here on earth with us in the form of a man, he couldn't be everywhere at once. And more importantly, he couldn't do his high priestly work. He, he All the things that he needed to do in heaven to make sure that the new covenant is now implemented upon us believers, he couldn't do if he stayed here. Instead, he sent back the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the ability to be in all of us at once. When my son was little, he asked me, Dad, how can the Holy Ghost be in me over here and then be in you over there? And I was like, I do not know. I don't know. Uh, things work differently in the spirit. I don't know. All I do know is, is that the third person of the Trinity, God in the form of the spirit, can be in all of us and with all of us at the same time worldwide. That's why he is here. The Holy Spirit is not an it. 
The Holy Spirit is a he, he's a person. There's that theme again. He's a person, not a set of rules. And he is here to speak to us what Jesus is saying from heaven now. One more time. The Spirit of God says, it's in the scripture, the Spirit of God said, what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost, he would only speak what he hears the Lord say. And the Lord only speaks what he hears the Father say. So the Holy Spirit of God is here to let us know what is Jesus saying now in this time and in this season so we can know what the Lord wants, what he expects of us, which is the most important thing. Because whatever God is saying, what applies to you is, well, what's my part in that? Because he's going to do the God parts, but you have to do the you part. Can you see it? So that's why I come on every week with a weekly live prophetic word so that we can prophetically ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Whatever the Holy Spirit gives us is what Jesus is saying. And whatever Jesus is saying is the will of the Father. That's the way it works. You see that? That's why you need the prophetic. And if you don't have that in your life, you're going to be out there stumbling and struggling and wondering what God is saying. You won't even know which scriptures to apply without the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? Did you know some people wrongly divide the word of truth? They, they don't understand what the Bible is saying. And then sometimes they wrongly apply the scripture because they never ask the Holy Ghost. What is the scripture for the hour? What is the scripture for this moment? What is it that you're saying in this moment? They never ask the person, the third person of the Trinity. What are you saying? Then they just out there struggling, swinging, flailing. That's why they don't know what to do. How can you be a Christian and not know what to do? You don't know what to do because you didn't ask the Lord. Because if you had asked the Lord, he would have told you. How can God require of us to serve him if he doesn't tell us how to serve him? Can you see it? Okay. Now, none of that is the prophetic word. That was just a preamble. That was just something I needed to throw in because I know it's football season. I know people are busy. I know there's a lot of stuff going on. But you've always got to ask the Lord, how am I doing? Am I doing what you want me to do? Am I in your perfect will? Am I being obedient? Am I completing? Just give me my grades. Tell me how I'm doing. That will only come through the prophetic. Okay. And if you never ask God that, you're going to live your whole life thinking that you're serving him only to stand before him. And he might say something to you like, get out of my face. We never had a relationship. I don't even know you. Can you imagine the shock of after living 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, yea, even 100 years of life on earth, thinking that you're serving God, only to actually stand before God to discover that you don't actually know him and you're never serving him. You just do, was doing what you thought and you never bothered to ask him. That's why you need the prophetic in your life. OK, all right. So none of that was the word. That was the preamble. Here's the prophetic word for today. The prophetic word for today is take a break. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said. The prophetic word from the Holy Spirit of God today is take a break. What is our scripture reference? I will show you. Our scripture reference, our first scripture reference is Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus 20 and 8. We're actually going to read verses 8 through 11, but I just want to look at uh, where we found this. Uh, Exodus 20 and 8, Moses is getting the Ten Commandments from God. Remember that the, the Lord gave the commandments to Moses face to face because God and Moses knew each other face to face. That's a personal relationship. Exodus 20 and 8 says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. If you've grown up in church, depending on what type of background you have, because different people have different views on the Sabbath day. Let me read for you Exodus 28 through 11. Uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. That's what the full text of the commandment actually says. There are different views on the, the Sabbath day. There are different views on the seventh day. The actual seventh day of the week is Saturday. It's not Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. The Hebrew people uh, believed in the concept of resting on the seventh day, but also 
uh, allowing their ground to rest in the seventh year. Uh, they do that to honor God's resting of the creation week, but they also, also, also uh, believe in uh, remembering that God brought them out of the slavery of Egypt. So they see the Sabbath as a double blessing, that it's a day of rest, but it's also a day of remembrance that God gave them rest from the Egyptian oppressors. Also, uh, the Hebrews have something called the Day of, the, of Atonement, which is the Sabbath of Sabbaths, where the high priest of their order would have to have ritual sanctification by the blood of a bull. And then he could enter into the most holy place and offer up sacrifices to God for the sins of the people. And if the high priest went into the Holy of Hol Holies without the proper uh, blood atonements over him, he'd die. Okay, so the Day of Atonement is the Sabbath of Sabbaths, where God gives you rest or forgiveness for your sins for the year. But remember, they have to do it every year because the blood of bulls and goats can't take away sin. And that's why that changes in the new covenant uh, with Jesus. OK. Uh, Christians uh, believe, well, Protestants kind of believe stuff that kind of came out of the Catholic Church. And what the Catholic Church believes is that because the Lord, uh, because they went to the tomb, because the Lord actually got up sometime on Saturday, but they went to the tomb early on Sunday morning, uh, Mary Magdalene, and then Peter and John ran to the tomb and uh, saw that the stone was rolled away. And then they also saw the angels and the Roman soldiers were knocked out and the Lord was gone. So the Catholic Church uh, believes that Christ's resurrection on the first day of the week or more accurately, their discovery of the resurrection on the first day of the week is why we should celebrate on Sunday. That's why actually we have church on Sunday in Catholicism and Protestants tend to, now Seventh-day Adventists don't, I'll get to that in a minute, but Catholics and Protestants, that's why we have, uh, we celebrate that on Sunday. Now, old school African-Americans, old school black people would let you do anything you normally, anything secular you couldn't do it on Sunday. In my grandmother's house, you couldn't wash clothes, Sometimes you couldn't watch TV. You definitely couldn't play cards of any kind. There are a lot of things you couldn't do because old school black people wanted to sanctify the day. They said, today is the Lord's day. So you go to church, you worship God, you eat your food, you fellowship, but that's what Sunday is for. And they're very strict about that. No washing clothes, no anything, okay? Uh, it's different with Lutheran views. Some Lutherans believe that Sabbath is, was just for Jews. So there's, again, that's why I started off telling you there are actually a lot of different religious and denominational views, but we want to see what the Lord said. And what the Lord said is that uh, <clears throat> the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And what that means is that so many people have made such a big deal about the Sabbath day until they've made it a God or a ritual, or they've, they've, they've worshiped it, or they, they put so many rules around it that they missed the point. They can't see the forest for all them ugly trees in the way. And the point was that when God got through with his creation work, creating both land animals and humans on the sixth day, because we weren't the only thing he made on the sixth day, okay? We were the last thing he made on the sixth day, but we weren't the only thing that God made on the sixth day. But then on the seventh day, he rested. And that's the point of the Sabbath, that once God got through doing his creation work and, creation, and creating the earth and all the things in the earth realm, after he did all that, he rested. That's the point of the Sabbath, even though there are many, many different denominational views on how it is to be observed. Okay. So I want to stick to the point. And so what the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk about today is that some of y'all out there, you just need to take a break. <clears throat> you just need to, need to take a break. You don't have a Sabbath rest in your life. You don't have a Sabbath rest in your schedule. You don't have anything in your life that you use to take a regular break. <clears throat> now, I have a new motto that I coined sometime within the last year. Now, of course, I haven't been living it perfectly, but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to live up to my new motto. And here's my new motto. My new motto is, if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. <clears throat> if you don't understand that, then we get full of pride. And then we start trying to say how things are supposed to go and trying to tell God how it's supposed to go. And 
we don't forgive ourselves because God has forgiven us by the blood of Jesus, but we won't forgive ourselves. And the Lord is merciful, but we won't be merciful. See, if it's good enough for God, it ought to be good enough for us. So I'm not perfect, but that's my new motto. So I'm trying to conform my life and my thoughts and my choices to that model, to that idea. That if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. Who am I to exalt my understanding and my perspective and my will above the will of God? That is just human pride. So what the Holy Ghost told me to release today is the idea that some of you need to understand that God worked six days and then he rested. Because some of you, now I know in my life, my lifestyle, uh, when I get going, I'm around the clock. I'm, I'm making music. I'm in the studio all kinds of hours. I'm practicing my piano all kinds of hours. I write when I did my last round of my, my you know, my alphabet series books. I was trying to get those ready for a quarterly conference in the spring. So I was trying to get them ready for a March or April release date. I think it was March. I stayed up in January and February. I stayed up just about every night. And if I took a quick nap, I would get back up at midnight. I would work from midnight to five or 2 a.m. to five in the morning to get those books done. But after that, at the end of March, man, I had this heavy depletion of energy. My body just gave out. I was like, what's wrong with me? And your body was like, you need to rest, son. So I had to drink some protein. I had to eat some more food. I had to change my diet because you got to rest. And that's what the spirit of God wanted me to convey to some, whoever's listening to me and looking at me now, if that's talking to you, that's for you and me, that <clears throat> you got to build regular rest into your schedule. I don't care what you're trying to accomplish. I don't care what you're trying to do. I want you to think about all that God accomplished in the six days of the creation week. What kind of stuff did God get done in six days? See, it's mind blowing. God is mind blowing. You cannot fit him in your mind. He's amazing. There actually aren't words to do him justice. <clears throat> but if he rested on the seventh day, if he took a break <laughs> and rested from all that he did, that means it, those of us that live in clay bodies, because remember that God does not sleep. God is so God is so awesome. God is so terrible until God don't even blink. Did you know that? Not only does God not sleep, but God actually does not get sleepy. The Bible says he shall not slumber or sleep. God doesn't get heavy. That means his eyes don't get heavy and the Lord doesn't blink. His eyes are always open. If God blinked, that would be me. There would be a moment of time where God wasn't looking, where something happened that he didn't see. Please show me the moment of time where something happens and God don't see it. Please show me that. When does that happen? Never. And not only that, but God sees everything on the whole earth. Because remember, when it's daytime here in America, it's nighttime in Japan and vice versa. When does the Lord sleep? Never. He don't even blink. And if he being that, if he rested, then what about those of us that live in clay bodies? What are we supposed to do? So that's what I mean when I say what the Spirit of God wanted me to release is that some of you need to build a rest into your schedules. Some of you need to take a break. You're about to work yourself into the hospital. You're about to work yourself into an early grave. You're about to run yourself in the ground because you have no, no uh, space in your life for breaks. Okay? That's prophetic word for today. Simple, short, and sweet. Okay? All right. I want to thank you for listening to me live. Those of you that watch me live, let me ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else he wants me to say. Okay. 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 Some of us, the Lord is, some of us, the Lord is saying, fear not. I know a lot is going on in 2020. God says, don't worry. I got it. I got you. That's why you can afford to take a break. Okay. So uh, praise God for that. Praise God for that uh, timely live prophetic word. So please build breaks into your schedule. Please don't run yourself in the ground, work yourself into the hospital or early grave. Leave your family and your friends too soon because you didn't learn how to rest. All right. That's it for this week. I will be back next week. Uh, remember, I'm not going to do a No More Genies until the second Thursday night. So it'll be the second Thursday in October. I, I got plenty of stuff coming up, some new stuff I've been working on. And uh, so can't wait to show it to you. And uh, so, yeah, so that's it for this week. And I will see you same time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central, Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic word. Amen. And God bless.
not die. Satan tries to threaten, and sickness is his weapon. To fill my days with strife, and cut 